Assalamualaikum and hello. It's nice to meet you again. If you refer to our previous videos on pilot foundation, I've explained how to estimate pilot capacity, how to calculate and bearing of a pile in sand or in clay, how to estimate shock friction of pile in sand or in clay. So there are separate equations that I've shown you, like uh, Mayerhoff's equation to estimate and bearing uh, SPTN method to calculate and bearing uh, for pile in sand, alpha method to estimate shock friction in clay or beta method to estimate shock friction in sand. So in order to calculate or in order to use those equations to estimate the pile capacity, we need to have soil parameters such as the unit weight of the soil, uh, the shear strength parameters like the cohesion, internal friction angle, as well as the interface friction angle between the pile and the surrounding soil. So those equation I will refer to as static formula. So in this video, I would like to talk about dynamic formula that we can use to estimate uh, pile capacity. Uh, before that, the soil parameters that we use to calculate the pile capacity based on static formula, we can obtain from uh, result from laboratory testing on the soil samples. So in this uh, dynamic formula, there's uh, quite a number of formula that you can use like uh, ENR formula or known as engineering news record formula, Yambu uh, equations or highly equations and so forth. But in this particular case, I would like to talk about highly formula to estimate pile capacity based on dynamic equation. So highly equation or highly formula Highly's equation or Highly's formula is given as U sub U P plus W plus R. So this is the total ground uh, resistance offered by the part where P here is the weight of part W is the weight of hammer we use to drive the pile and R here is related to the energy transferred from the hammer to the pile and the soil which is expressed as W multiplied by N multiplied by capital H divided by S plus C divided by 2 multiplied by this Greek letter. Okay. So the definition of each item in this R is given as the W here equals to the previous W here which is a weight of the hammer being used to drive the part. Items in the parenthesis and multiplied by capital H is known as the effective fall of the hammer to drive the power. So, NH is the effective fall of the hammer, where H here is the actual actual drop of hammer so the actual drop of the hammer we can set whether we want or let's say 100 millimeters or 300 millimeters or 500 millimeters we can set the actual drop of the hammer to hit the part whereas n here is the coefficient related to the efficiency of the hammer so n related to the efficiency of the hammer normally is equal to 100% for drop hammer okay. so for the hammer normally the hammer being used is a hydraulic hammer lift by hydraulic system and then released to fall freely by gravity that's what we call it as a drop hammer so in that case and 
equals to 100%. So NH become the effective force becomes actual load of the hammer. So if you use if you use different hammer, so the end could be different. Okay. Next is uh, S here. S. S. Some people call it as sand. Right? By definition, S is the penetration per blow. So per uh, the, the penetration we have to measure how much the penetration for one blow. That's what I mean by S or set penetration per blow. So how to measure this uh, penetration per blow? Normally we measure or we determine this S here penetration per blow when we observe the pile cannot penetrate the soil anymore. Meaning the pile already hits a hard layer. Right? So the, the way or the method to uh, determine the S is something like this. Let's say when we observe the pile cannot go in anymore, so we ask the operator to stop driving the pile. Okay? So when this, uh, the, 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 the driving process is stopped, let's say I exaggerate here. Let's say this is the pile okay? and this is the ground. So stop hammering, then we place, let's say, a brick here on the left hand side of the pile and another brick on the right hand side of the pile. So make sure uh, the, the, the brick is not too close to the pile, not too close to the pile. Okay. Next is to place, that's a straight, let's say, a reinforcement bar. Straight reinforcement bar. The smooth one. Don't use the reinforcement bar with with the ribbed. The smooth one. Okay. After that, we attach a graph paper. If possible, use a graph paper. If not possible, you can use plain paper like this. So you attach to the pile using masking tape. Okay. Let's say this is your graph paper or sheet of paper attached to the file. Yeah. Then you take your pencil or pen, place your pen on this reinforcement bar. Just like, just imagine the reinforcement bar, my hand acts like a reinforcement bar. And then you place your pen on top of this, uh, my hand here. And then make sure the pen touch the graph paper. Okay. After you do that, you ask the operator to start hammering the hammer, uh, the, the pile again. Maybe you ask him to hit the hammer another 10 or 15 times more. Okay. So when the pile is being hammered or being hit, so you, you can imagine the pile is going in to the soil, it's going downward. So when the pile is going downward, so you can imagine that Automatically, since you place your pen here, so automatically a straight line upward is drawn. Right? Just like imagine something like this. Let's say this is a pile, and then you place your pen here. Okay, sorry. Pen here. And then the pile being hit, and then the pile will move downward. So automatically will draw a line upward right so due to the hard layer of the soil there will be a temporary compression of the ground then the pile will bounce back so when the pile bounce back so automatically a straight line downward will be drawn right so when you hit the, uh, the, the pile for another 10 or 15 times so you can get a series of plot something like this going up down going up down going up and down going up and down going up and down okay, you hit 10, ten times so you get series of curve something like this so let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 exactly 10 let's say you start here okay 
So, after you finish hammering or hitting the pile, ask the operator to stop driving the pile, then you take the graph paper out. Okay. So, when you take the graph paper out, Let's say we take the graph paper out. I exaggerate again here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. So this is the initial before the pile being hit. Right? And that is the final. So, the S here, you measure. Because you use graph paper, you can measure directly. If you use plain paper, then you have to take a measuring tape and measure. So, the distance from this point to the final point here, let's say equals to small d. Right? in mm or in cm, normally in mm. Right? So S here, if this is the case, then S equals to D divided by how many blows here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 blows. So D divided by 10. That is the S or set or some people call it S, penetration per blow, expressed as mm per blow. Right? mm per blow. Right. Next is the C here. C here is the temporary compression. Temporary compression of the pile after you hit. So pile going in a little and then it bounces back. So this temporary compression is indicated by this sharp points here. So you measure each peak and then you take the average. So C here is the temporary ground compression. Okay. Next is the this Greek letter. This Greek letter is uh, related to what we call the efficiency of the hammer blow. Previously we have NH that is the effective fall of the hammer now is the efficiency of the hammer blow so this efficiency is expressed as w plus p multiplied by e squared divided by w plus p okay i erase here So W here is the weight of the hammer, P here is the weight of the pile, E, e is uh, something to do with this impact during the hammering of the uh, pile. It depends on the uh, hammer type, the type of pile as well as the pile head condition. Normally, normally, I said normally, E equals to 0 0.25 for RC or timber pile 0 0.25 0 0.25 for RC or timber pile right, your force concrete or timber piles fitted with helmet and wooden cushion okay so the type of pile RC or timber pile and then this pile is fitted with helmet and wooden cushion so let's say this is the pile head okay pile head is equipped with helmet steel helmet steel helmet this is the cross section diagram of the helmet Okay, in addition to this helmet, wooden cushion is installed. 
here as well as on top here. Okay. So this is the helmet. So this hatch part is what we call wooden cushion. Wooden cushion here. Yeah. Wooden cushion. Wooden cushion. And here is the helmet. And is the pile. So the purpose of installing helmet and wooden cushion on the pile head is to prevent uh, the pile head from being damaged by the hammer. And so E equal to 0 0.25 for RC pile or Timbo pile with this helmet. And then using drop hammer. So if we install different or we use different parts other than uh, timber parts or concrete parts and then different type of helmet, different type of hammer, so the E will be different. Okay? So that's how we obtain or we estimate the value of this efficiency of the hammer blow. So in summary, R here is more on the energy transfer from the hammer to the pile to the ground. What else here? So P, W, R, W, P, H, C. Okay. Those are the items in Hiley's equation that we have to obtain in order to uh, estimate the pile capacity. So those uh, parameters or those items we can obtain on site during the driving of the power. Okay. Okay, let's take a look uh, at an example how to use this equation to estimate pilot capacity. Okay, let's take a look at an example of uh, driving a pile here. So we have 450 mm by 450 mm, a square pile with the length of uh, 18 meters. This is a RC pile installed in sand. Uh, the process of driving the pile uh, using a 20 kN drop hammer with the actual hammer drop being set equals to uh, 300 mm. Uh, after the pile hit the hard layer, the final set was recorded as 3 mm and then the temporary compression equals to 5 mm. So if you remember the final set and the temporary compression approximately, Let's say, you know, so this is the D divided by the hammer blow, so you get the final set equals to 3 mm, and then the temporary compression here up at the average is uh, 5 mm. So, estimate QU using Hiley's formula. Okay. So Hiley's formula is given as Q sub U equals to P plus W plus R. Okay. P here is the weight of the pile, W is the weight of the hammer, R is the uh, energy transfer from hammer to the pile as well as to the ground. So let's calculate P. The weight of pile, weight of pile equals to the unit weight of the concrete multiplied by the volume of the pile. So, unit weight of concrete, the average, normally we use 24 kN per meter cube multiplied by the volume of the pile being driven. So, the pile is dimension of pile uh, 450 mm by 450 mm. Uh, 80 meters long. So 0 0.45 multiplied by 0 0.45 multiplied by 18. 45, 0 0.45, 0 0.45, 0 0.45, that is the cross section, and then 18 is the length. So P here equals to uh, 87.5 kilonewton. That is the weight of the part. So W is given. 20 kN. Now let's calculate R here. 
the energy transfer okay, from the pile uh, from the hammer to the pile and to the uh, ground. So R is given as uh, W multiplied by N multiplied by capital H divided by S plus C divided by 2 multiplied by this uh, Greek letter to represent the efficiency of the hammer blow. So the efficiency of the hammer blow here is given as W plus P multiplied by E squared divided by W plus P. Okay. So W W equals the weight of the hammer equals to 20 kN plus P is the weight of the pile 87.5 and then E is not given but remember you refer back to your notes for a drop hammer right drop hammer and then it drag, drag the RC pile so I forgot to mention here pile uh, fitted with helmet and cushion so if this is the case E equals to 0 0.25 so 0 0.25 squared divided by 20 plus 87.5 so equals to uh, 0 0.24 that is the efficiency of the hammer blow Okay, w plus P is squared divided by W plus P. So E equals to 0 0.25 because we use drop hammer and then we drive uh, RC pile and the pile is fitted with helmet and cushion. Right. Next, let's calculate R here. So R equal to W here is the weight of the hammer 20 kN. Right, 20 kN. And then here the effective fall, small n. Refer back to your notes. So for drop hammer, n equals to 100% or equals to 1. So 1 multiplied by h is the capital H is the actual drop. Actual drop here is 300 mm. So we convert 2 meters it becomes 0 0.3 meters. And then multiply by this efficiency, we just calculated, we obtain 0 0.24 and then divided by S, that is the final set, is given as uh, 3 mm. So 3 mm divided by 1000 in order to get a unit of meter. And then plus C here is the temporary compression is given your temporary compression equals to 5 mm so 5 mm not here divided by 2 and then we convert the unit from millimeters to meter so we have to divide by 1000 so if we calculate R here it equals to 262 kilometer of the value okay so we have calculated the p and the r so the q sub u you substitute the values here p 87.5 87.5 and then the w equals to 20 kilometer and the r 262 kN. so when we calculate we should get 300 70 kilo newton that is the ultimate load that can be uh, resisted by the pile based on this highly formula if you are to find the allowable load then you have to divide this q sub u by safety factor let's say uh, safety factor equals to 2 so this 370 divided by 2 so that's how we estimate the pile capacity using Halley's formula. So as I mentioned previously, there are other formulas that you can use. So you are to come to use 
those formula. With that, I end this session. Until we meet again, thank you.